In our last video, we were able to calculate the expected value of a scratch-off lottery ticket, and we saw that, on average, we expected to get back around 60 to 80 cents for every dollar that we spent. In this case, we're losing about 20 to 40% of our money, but what if there was a ticket where the amount that we expected to win was actually greater than the amount that we paid for it? This sounds like something that lotteries would watch out for, but it's actually happened and people have profited from it within the past 10 years. In today's video, we'll be going over the story of the cash windfall game, which was held by the Massachusetts State Lottery. We'll go over the math to explain how this was a profitable game, and we'll also look at the groups of people who saw this opportunity and were able to make millions of dollars from what they discovered. So first of all, cash windfall was introduced in late 2004 and consisted of players choosing six numbers between one and 46. Players would win prizes for matching two or more of their numbers with the winning numbers, which were drawn twice a week. If you matched all six of your numbers with the winning numbers, then you would win the jackpot. The jackpot began at $500,000 and grew with each drawing that didn't have a winner. The odds of matching all six numbers turns out to be about 1 in 9,300,000. So winning the jackpot was extremely rare and only happened 10 times in the 769 drawings. Because of this, the jackpot prize would normally grow into the millions of dollars. Now, this is where cash windfall becomes different than other lottery games. Whenever the jackpot for a drawing was greater than $2 million and no one matched all six of their numbers exactly, the jackpot would reset at $500,000 and the old jackpot would be distributed down to the smaller prizes in what was known as a roll down. For example, matching five of the six numbers was usually a $4,000 prize, but when the jackpot reached $2.4 million on February 8th, 2010 and nobody won the jackpot, this prize increased to over $22,000. So I think you could see how this could possibly lead to a positive investment, but let's calculate the exact value of the ticket to see how much we should be making. First, let's look at a regular drawing where the jackpot doesn't exceed $2 million. Let's say that the jackpot for this drawing was only $1 million. So the way that this table is set up is that in this first column, we have the amount of numbers that we matched. In the second column, we have the odds of getting that number of matches. And lastly, in the third column, we have the price that we get for getting that number of matches. To find out how much each prize contributes to the overall value of the ticket, we first want to take each prize, which in this case is going to be a million dollars, and then we want to multiply it by the odds of winning that prize, which is one in nine million. And multiplying these together, we can see that just the chance of winning a million dollars from this ticket is worth about 11 cents on its own. Now we could do the same math for the other prizes, and when we add all of these values up, we see that we get about 50 cents. So this is the value of winning a cash prize from our ticket, but what about this 1 in 6.83 chance of winning another ticket? Well, we can take the sum of the cash prizes that we just calculated and divide by the odds of winning a ticket, and we can see that this comes out to be about 7 cents. When we add these two values together, we get a total ticket value of about 57.5 cents. But, like we saw in the previous video, this is actually a problem. Since we use the 50 cents here as the value of the ticket, but now we know that this value is actually larger after factoring in the chance of winning another ticket. After updating this value based on the new total value of the ticket, we can see that it adds about one cent of extra value. If we update this enough times, the value eventually converges to just under 59 cents. This is actually an awful return on our investment, considering that each cash windfall ticket costs $2 to buy. On average, we'll only get about 30% of our money back while playing this game. But now let's look at a game where the jackpot is over $2 million. On February 8th, 2010, the jackpot reached $2.4 million, and just like 98.7% of drawings, no one won the jackpot and the money was rolled down to the smaller prizes. Matching five of your six numbers, which was usually a $4,000 prize, is now worth $22,000. And for four out of six numbers, which was normally a $150 prize, it's now worth over $800. And lastly, matching three out of six numbers is normally a $5 prize, but is now worth about $27. We can find each prize's contribution to the value of the ticket using the same formula as before, where we take each prize and we multiply by one over the odds of winning that prize. When we do that for the three possible prizes here, we can see that the value comes out to be about $2.14. This is already more than the $2 that we paid for the ticket, but we have to account for the extra value from the chance of winning another ticket. When we calculated this for the regular drawing, we saw that it was about 8.5 cents. But these tickets that we win as prizes can be used in any future drawing, so let's assume that we're only going to use them when there's another roll down. We can use the same process as before to find the value added from the chance of winning a ticket, but now with a much higher cash value. And after a couple of iterations, it finally converges to about 37 cents, meaning that the ticket is now worth over $2.50. 
Now that the total ticket value is actually more than the price that we paid for the ticket, we can see that we have a positive return of about 25%. This is an extremely good return, considering that the stock market averages about a 10% return over the course of an entire year. So now that we've seen how this could be a profitable game, let's take a look at the people that figured out this strategy and were able to make millions of dollars over the years. In 2005, an MIT student named James Harvey was working on a project that calculated the value of various lottery games. He stumbled across Cash Windfall, and after realizing that this game could be a positive investment, he gathered money from about 50 of his friends, who each put in around $20. On February 7th, 2005, when the rolldown occurred, the group's $1,000 investment had won $3,000 in lottery prizes. They continued to reinvest their winnings until they were filling out around 300,000 tickets for each rolldown drawing and players weren't allowed to use computers to fill out their tickets, so they had to all be done by hand. The group had to find retailers that were willing to spend hours scanning thousands of their tickets, but they eventually found some that were willing since the stores made 5% commission off of lottery sales. It's not known exactly how much the MIT group profited from their strategy, but it's estimated to be around $3.5 million over the course of Cash Windfall's existence. But the MIT students weren't the only people who discovered the secret of Cash Windfall. Gerald Selby was a retail store owner in Michigan where he sold tickets and became familiar with the Michigan State Lottery. Before the Massachusetts State Lottery launched Cash Windfall, Michigan had their own version of the game, which began in 2003. Selby noticed that this roll down feature made the game profitable on certain drawings, so he gathered a group of 30 friends and relatives to invest in the game. Michigan's version of Cash Windfall ended in 2005, but one of Selby's group members informed him of the one that had just started up in Massachusetts. Selby and his wife drove from Michigan to Massachusetts looking for stores that would be able to handle their large volume of tickets. They eventually found two and included the store owners as members of their investment group. They tested their strategy for the first time on August 29, 2005, and their $120,000 wager turned into $178,000, earning a $58,000 profit. Like the MIT group, they continued to reinvest their winnings until they were buying around 300,000 tickets for each rolldown game. Selby found that this was the optimal number of tickets to buy to achieve the highest profit. Over the course of the games in both Michigan and Massachusetts, the group profited $7.75 million between 2003 and 2012. The game came to an end after a reporter found out about these high volume betting groups and broke the story to the public. People became angry with the state lottery for allowing the high spending bettors to profit off of the other lottery players, who were the ones that were building up these jackpots. So in 2012, the lottery decided to shut cash windfall down. I just find it crazy that something with such a high potential for return remained undiscovered by the public for nearly a decade. It just goes to show how knowing these simple statistical concepts, such as calculating expected value, can give you extremely valuable information that you can apply to all areas of your life. I found most of the information for this video from a letter to the treasurer of Massachusetts, as well as this article by the Huffington Post, so I'll leave links to these references in the description below. I also first came across this story while reading the book How Not To Be Wrong, The Power Of Mathematical Thinking by Jordan Ellenberg which is full of great examples of applying mathematics and statistics to real life situations. So I'll leave a link to this book in the description as well. If you're interested in videos such as this one, feel free to check out the other videos on my channel. I'm still pretty new to YouTube, but I really enjoy making these videos. So if you could show your support by liking, commenting, or subscribing, it would help me out a ton with trying to grow this channel. Thanks for all of the support so far, and I can't wait to share all of the future videos that I have in store. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.